So, we've just covered Corona and Lua. We've covered high level MVC, model view controller. Let's talk about robot legs. The implementation of MVC, specifically for developing multi device applications for Corona SDK. What's your problem? Your problem is you have a problem called scale and applications. It's hard. I thought MVC solved that, Jesse. You're right, it does. The solution for scale and applications in a formalized fashion. Here are the rules. Here's the way everyone on this team does it. Here's how everyone who uses robot legs does it. So when you get a robot legs app, you actually have a fighting chance to understand how it works, right? Whether you're on a team or a new company, supports rapid application development or RAD. Basically, multi developers working in the same code base with a source control system. What is the implementation? It's formalized MVC, yes. Model view controller services. It's their opinion on how you do it with Jesse Warden's amalgamation from the ActionScript 3 version. Okay? That's me, by the way. So, Robot Legs has models for models, right? They're called models. Mediators are the views. So, if you're familiar with mediators and backbones, it's very similar to that. It's kind of like the mediator pattern. We'll get to it in a bit. Um, but it, it allows views to talk to other views without having a direct coupling of it. Commands are for the scalable or don't repeat yourself controller logic, okay? A lot of times mediators will be the ones who talk to models and call methods. If there's something complex or some kind of complex orchestration of models and setting data and asynchronous operations that more than one person can do, that would be refactored to command so everyone else could use the same place and it could, that logic could be done in one place. Services, they follow convention, okay? The, the normal services are, basically I'm getting some data for somewhere. We'll go over them in a bit, okay? So that's robot legs from a high level. Those are the four main patterns from MVCS, okay? There's other design patterns in it, but these are the ones that we're concerned with. So robot legs was actually developed by Sean Smith. He's from South Africa. He's a robot legs inventor. He had a lot of good ideas and he basically released it before it was done. So it was really cool to be involved with Robot Legs and use it while it was in development, take it for a test drive, give him some feedback. And he was really cool to both listen to that, but also kind of guide us on where he wanted to go. So that was kind of neat. Um, Swift Suspenders was actually the dependency injection library that Robot Legs was kind of built around, right? And it was really the core of how a lot of things work. And that was developed by Till. I can't pronounce his last name because I'm not as cool as uh, most people. His Swift Suspenders library was actually based on... Um, the Java version of Juice, we'll get that in a minute. So it was originally created in ActionScript 3, okay? ActionScript 3 is a strong type language with the ability to set metadata, completely different from Lua, okay? So just be aware of where it came from. Swift Suspenders was inspired by Java's Juice. So if you're familiar with Java Spring, Juice is another dependency in injection or inversion of control framework, right? That was where Swift Suspenders kind of came from. If you're familiar with Spring, kind of like that, sort of. The secret sauce, okay, Swift Suspenders really, and what really drove the core of the Flash application framework with stage added event, you know, display objects being added and having auto mediation and all that stuff was the keep AS3 metadata MXMLC compiler flag parameter, which allowed arbitrary metadata placed upon public variables in a class definition. You could be read at runtime via describe type function. You could take that XML out, parse it via E4X or ECMA for ECMAScript for XML, usually via the inject tag. What did I just say? So basically, you instantiate a class, robot legs would instantiate your model, or a command, or a mediator, it would see a dependency, a public variable. Public variable had no value, it just had this little annotation tag, bracket, inject, bracket at the top. When you compile that down to a Swift, all your action script gets converted to like zeros and ones, right? But that metadata that you added at the top, if you have that compiler flag, it'll actually stay with it for public variables, not private, not protected. You can read those at runtime by having your class be, that bytecode, be represented in an XML format. You can parse that XML format and say, hey, look, there's some metadata. This is a special robot legs class. I need to give those some dependencies. In this case, dependency injection, right? Rather than you knowing it yourself or referencing some global singleton somewhere, I'll handle giving you your dependencies before you even run, okay? That was the value. So you instantiate the class, you look for the inject tags in XML, Hey, you found some? Cool. Let's set the dependencies. This guy is looking for a user model. We already have one set up, and it looks like he wants a unique instance every time. We'll give him that. This looks like it look, wants a singleton model. We'll give him that, right? Those injection rules were all set up. It was a really nice system. It allowed for readable code, and for the most part, it was pretty fast. 
and it was a lot more readable and like you can figure things easier to unit test yada yada